Hi, my name is Felix Lipov, and I'm lead software engineer at Arative. Today we're going to talk about how to evaluate fault detection technology. There are a lot of options out there. It's tough sometimes to feed out the noise from the good stuff. We're going to help you look at the criteria necessary to figure out what might work best in your particular building. Now, first things first, you need to understand what are the critical pieces of equipment that make your building run. Those are your pumps, your motors, your boilers, your chillers, your elevators, etc. If any one of those piece of equipment fails, breaks down, has any issues, that's going to make an impact potentially financially as well as a tenant comfort. And we don't want that. So solutions out there, for instance, look at anomaly detection. What does that mean? You have data coming in through a system and all of a sudden, boom, you've broken a threshold. Energy spike, alert, email. But what does that mean? you'll get some sort of message saying that you've broken some sort of threshold that was built by a human, but what's the actual problem you're trying to solve? And this is where you go from anomalies to fault detection. Fault detection involves a lot more than just breaking a threshold. It's about having a dynamic understanding of the environment, contextualizing the problem, not just saying that we have a spike in energy use, but my fan belt slipped, my motor failed, I have short cycling, um, my pumps are not feeding my boilers, and I'm not going to have hot water. Those are the kind of things you want to understand to bring the problem back to reality, and fundamentally then, machine enhanced. Now what does that mean? Imagine you have a feedback loop where if there's a fault, something goes wrong, you can get your best engineers to look into it. They can look at the data, they can look at the system figure out the problem, fix it, and put the problem to bed. Then we bake that knowledge into algorithms and reproduce this loop hundreds and thousands and millions of times. So that next time it happens, we know exactly what's wrong. So what are the criteria you need to consider when evaluating this kind of solution? Number one, equipment level data. What does that mean? It means getting very granular data on the critical piece of equipment we mentioned that will get you the data you need for the piece of equipment that's necessary to make sure your building's running 100%. Number two, vertical focused. You want to make sure that the solution you're looking at focuses at your industry, whether it's industrial buildings, commercial office buildings, residential buildings, because the faults that you might expect will be different. Number three, technology and humans. As compared to just anomalies, that tell you that data is saying something's wrong, you need to get that human connection, you need to contextualize it back to reality. That's very important to understand how do I actually solve and resolve this problem for good. Four, fault library. You want to make sure that they understand, again, the kind of issues you have in your building, and they have a number, not just one, two, or three, but dozens of types of different scenarios to help you optimize operations and avoid potential issues. And then next, granular data. Why? Because certain types of faults will only come up, not 15 minute, but minutely, sometimes even secondly data. And this will then lead to predictive analytics. And last but not least, multiple data types. You want to make sure that you're capturing not just, say, power, but also, say, gas, water, environmental statistics, um, noise, vibration. All these types of data can help support and contextualize understanding that will support fault detection to make sure that if something goes wrong, you'll know exactly the problem, how to resolve it, and how to make sure your building's running 100%. I hope this was helpful. Thank you very much.